Welcome back to Enshrouded. Today, I'm building a cozy little house in the forest of Revelwood to act as an outpost for all of the quests in this area that we unlocked in last episode. So with that said, sit back and enjoy the build. So I found a nice little clearing in the trees that I think will be the perfect size for the house I want to build today. And it's right near the Willow Crush camp right over there to give you all a reference. So with that said, the main blocks that we'll be using in this build will be the stone, a little bit of shroud wood, and then tarred wood block, some rough wood blocks, some flintstone blocks, and then tarred shingle roof block. Possibly a little bit of the stone shingle roof block, but I'm not sure yet. And then I might mix in a little bit of the mycelium overgrown block just to give it some foresty character. So with that said, these are pretty early game materials, so hopefully it'll be fairly easy to get a bunch of them. I just got a bunch of them in like 10 minutes, <laughs> so not too bad once you have all the NPCs and everything. So with that, I'm going to start the build. This house may have a basement, so I think I'm going to do the foundation with these 4 meter foundation pieces out of stone. And it'll actually make it easier to dig a basement underneath it later on. So let's see, let me kind of center it in this clearing here. And rather than being all the way in the ground, I'm just going to kind of bump it up like that so it's two blocks above the ground. And we will make a four long by two deep. And that'll be the main house size. And then I'm thinking a covered porch off the front here. And then a little chimney off to the side there. So just snapping that halfway in. And that'll be the floor layout, so a bit smaller and cozier than the first one I did. But I think it'll work out well. So with that, let's go to our columns here. And snap one of those on each of the corners here. So there we go, and I'm starting the build out fairly similar to the first one I did, but it will be a little bit different. I want to snap two of those there, and this will be a little door and two little windows going out onto the porch here. So there we go. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good layout to start out with. I may end up, yeah, maybe I'll do like a little pillar there and one there or something. So there we go. That should be a pretty good layout. I think now I'm going to start working on the walls just so we know where those are. And for those, I'm actually going to use a combination of the tarred wood block as well as flintstone, just to give it some interesting texture. So I'm going to go to my hammer here, and then go to my 4 meter, and then go to the door frame piece here. And then select that to be out of the rough flintstone, and then turn off X so that we can uh, have a little bit finer snapping here. And let's see, something like this. We're just going to do like one block high. A little tiny perimeter here. I think that's in the right spot, yep. So just all the way around the build. Doesn't matter if you phase it in here, it'll only use the materials that it needs. So let's see, another one... ...right here. And then I'll rotate it again. And complete this perimeter all the way around. And then obviously leaving a little gap for the door right here. And the chimney. Here we go, so now for the chimney section I'll just select the single block and just hand place two of them on each side there. And there we go, that'll be our little interior layout here. A little foundation section. And then with that I want to select my 2 meter here. And go to these 2 meter wall pieces and select those to be out of the tarred wood block. And I'm just going to stack those on top of that flint foundation piece that we just placed all the way around the build. And then again for the chimney, I'll just select the single block and we can just easily place a bunch of these up right here. And that'll do. Perfect. So the reason I really like this block over the normal wooden block is that it will give it sort of a log cabin look. And I really like that feel for the forest here. 
So now that we have the floor layout and a bit of the walls in, it would be a good time to start working on the basement. And I've never done one of these in Enshrouded before, so this will be a first time for me as well, but we'll try this. So I'm thinking as I can go to the 2x2 two two wall block blueprint and just start sort of selecting the build here and just destroying down. So I'm just going to do this all over the entire floor, which will basically destroy this inner area down by two blocks deep. And then again, I, I'll just kind of, yeah, I'll start in the corners here. And I'm not going to do it in the chimney area, just in this whole area. Alright, so here we go, and that's the benefit of these foundation pieces, is that they actually continue into the ground a ways. So you can kind of get like a head start on your foundation and basement by already having a bunch of stone continuing down. I usually don't like to use them if I'm just doing an above ground house. But yeah, they continue into the ground uh, by another two blocks deeper than what you see exposed here. So that can be nice for the basement. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Again, just with the 2x2, two two, and go ahead and delete it down a whole nother level. And there you go, you can see as we're deleting it, that brings us to the ground level. So here's the ground, and then from here, we'll be doing something different. But yeah, I'm just going to delete the rest of this floor out of here. Okay, so here we go. Now you can see it's deleted all the way to the bottom here. So we've just taken out two rows of these blocks. And I'm going to use this same blueprint, and I'm going to do the same thing with the ground. We're just going to let the blueprint snap into place. And just make sure you're taking your time on this, because the ground is a bit harder to see uh, with stuff like this. It's a bit harder to kind of uh, not know where you've placed it and where you haven't, because of the fact that the ground texture kind of meshes together. Which is, again, why this blueprint will make things a lot easier. So just doing nice, consistent rows all the way across until the ground is another two blocks deep like this. And here you can see that finished. So I think this turned out pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and do that exact same thing again here on the terrain. So just deleting nice rows at a time. And then I think that'll be the final depth of my basement here. Okay, there we go. That looks like a really, really nice basement. And I almost really like this ground texture, especially the way it looks here in this biome. So maybe we'll keep the basement floor like this. By the way, this gives us plenty of depth now to either keep the floor like this and have like a big cellar area or be able to build it up a little bit after the fact. So now I'm going to go ahead back into my hammer, go to the four meter here and go to the ceiling block. And I want that to just be out of the rough wood here. And then I'm just going to turn off X so we can get it in the spot we want it. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill. Well, actually, I'm going to do it from the other side because this will be where the stairs go up. And I'll just want to be able to have a little bit of light there to be able to see what I'm doing. But here we go. All right. We'll just snap it in there and then move back. Right to there. So something just like that for now. And then I will actually start working on the staircase here. So let me go back into tab, but this time go to the two meter section. Go to the two meter ceiling and let's see, just put that all the way across on this side here. Cool. Okay. And then I'm just going to do like a little temporary stair here. Just so that I have a way to get out. So I can step on top of this and double jump out of here. Perfect. And now we can start working on the stairs that go up to the loft. And we'll kind of mirror those by doing stairs under them that go down to the basement here. But this is looking really nice so far. And I've noticed there's a tree right here that's going to be a little too close to the house. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one down. And I actually haven't cut down any trees yet in this forest biome. 
So I wonder if they give us anything different? Did that drop anything? Oh, there's something down here. Looks like that's resin. Did the wood end up inside of the house in the basement area? Let's see here. Yeah, there's some wood here. Okay, so just normal wood logs it looks like. But I'm kind of curious just while we're doing this, what happens if I cut down one of these really big trees? Oh gosh, we've got one of the shooty plant thingies over here. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and try this and then I think I'm going to go back home afterward and sleep so you guys can see more of the building in the daytime. Here we go. Ooh, and that's how we get hardwood. That's awesome. Okay. And yeah, like I said, I do wonder if the uh, carpenter unlocks anything new with hardwood or if it will eventually, but that's cool. Alright, I'm gonna go sleep and I'll see you back here in the daytime. And while I'm back at the bigger house here to sleep, I'm actually gonna go ahead and check in with the alchemist here because he has a red exclamation point above his head. And it looks like it's because of the mycelium that we just picked up to make all those new blocks. Alright, well, let's see. What is that? That thing you carry. Mycelium? Flameborn, I advise you to be cautious. What you're holding is highly dangerous. It's a disease. It's suffering. It's fungus that aims to devour the world. Humans saw potential in the flesh of the plant, but they only brought calamity. Please stay clear of the substance. It marks demise. Okay. Well, I won't be staying clear of it. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll be doing something weird to the build, but I guess we'll see. And for those of you who don't know, the mycelium uh, either comes in some of the chests and things that we looted over at the elixir well, uh, but you can also just mine it from all of the glowy parts that are down in the shroud. Okay, back to the build now for the stairs. I'm gonna go ahead and select the two meter stair blueprint here, and then put it right on here so that the very top step is just inside that, uh, just inside the stone pillar here. And then I'm gonna scroll to the two meter ceiling piece and kind of come over to the side here and drop it down right there. Okay. Yeah, just making sure it's not sticking through. Perfect. So this will be like our little landing platform and then I'll go back to the two meter stairs here. Rotate them around a little bit. And then the top step here will snap in something Let's see, just like that there. Awesome. And then at the very top of this should be the same exact height as the top of these stone pillars here. Which it looks like is the case. So that should be perfect. Okay, and then just like I did on my other build, I would love to go ahead and replace the very edges of them with just the stone blocks. So I just love how it trims out the build. And now I'm going to go ahead and destroy these floor pieces right underneath these upper stairs. Something just like that. Perfect. And then that will essentially make some space for the stairs to go down to the cellar here. So let me go ahead and finish in the floor up here. Just going ahead and selecting the 2 meter ceiling piece. And then filling these in. There we go. And then right over here in this corner as well. I want that to be filled in. Perfect. And then going back to my two meter stairs here. I'm going to then just kind of push them down and right back to the wall. Just like that so that the top section of this is directly in line with the top of that step there. And I think that looks pretty good. So I can go ahead and destroy this one. We can go back to our 2 meter ceiling piece. Place it right there. Go back to the stairs. Do a rotate and place them right like that. Perfect. So now this staircase perfectly is in line with this top one right here. And that should work out well. And then we can go ahead and just kind of grab our single block up here and go ahead with the wood pieces. Build our floor right back in this little section.
Just like that. Awesome. Okay. So now with the stairs complete, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on the main floor again. So I'm gonna go into tab, and we're gonna continue these walls up to the top height of these stone pillars. And to do that, I'm gonna first just scroll down to my tarred wood block. And we're gonna go ahead and build these up by two more blocks tall all the way around so that we have it essentially one block from the very top. And then the very top of the pillar there will go to our stone block and essentially just build it two blocks wide. A little tiny uh, trim piece all the way up top here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue that all the way around the entire perimeter here. And then I'm also just gonna go ahead and continue the stone here right above the door. There we go. Perfect. And in some cases it might be easier to just do the top stone trim piece here first. And then go ahead and fill it in underneath it. Just to be able to have an easier spot to stand. Alright, so here are the walls completed now. And again, I just left some space for the fireplace and chimney out back here. And I think for the fireplace and chimney, I'm gonna go do that after I have the roof on. Just so that I can kind of get a sense of where exactly I want to taper in and how I want to build the chimney, what size I want it to be and everything. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and get a second floor down over here. We'll just go back into tab and then scroll down to the 4 meter here, go to the ceiling piece and just do it out of rough cut wood there. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a second floor almost over the whole build here. And we'll just kind of stop it at the chimney section here. And then come right back here, something like that. Scroll back to our 2 meter pieces and go to the ceiling. And then just go ahead and put it just like that. So that looks pretty good. There's our second floor, that'll just make roofing a lot easier. And then for this section, you'll notice we can't get down here yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my uh, single blocks up top. And then destroy out one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there we go. Now we should have no trouble getting down the stairs, and that's exactly how it is to get down to the cellar here as well. So perfect. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the roof. And I'm just going to go to my four meter roof blueprint here, and I want it out of the tarred shingle roof block. And then we'll just make sure that X is disabled to make this a lot easier. And we'll go right up to the edge here up front. Just kind of looking over the side, you can also zoom in and out of your character to make this easier. Just by pressing Z in the scroll wheel on mouse and keyboard here. And then rather than just doing it at the edge like I did the first time on my first house, I want to actually do a bit of an overhang because this tarred shingle roof block actually has a beautiful design that I really want to accentuate. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of sit it down and then push it out by one block. And there we go. We'll go ahead and rotate it around. And then again, rather than having it right on the edge here, we're just going to sit it down there. And then push it out. And there we go. And yeah, check this out. Look at how it meets up in the center here with this nice roof ridge and these little carvings and things. Look at how the overhangs look. It just really fits the forest theme here really nicely. So I'm just going to do the same thing here over on this side, just kind of sitting it down, bring it to the edge, push it forward by one block, that looks nice. Rotate it around, sit it down the edge, and let's see, push it forward, I think. Let me just make sure I know where the edge is, there we go, just like that. And then that will be kind of tight for the stairs here. But you'll definitely fit down here without any issues. It's definitely the smallest I'd want to make a loft here. But it certainly works for a cozy little house. So now I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the back side here. And we can just kind of do it just like that there. And then a similar thing on this side. And for this, I'll just kind of zoom out of my character and match it up with the top section here. Right here, sit it down, and then just kind of scooch it over, just like that. Perfect. And then for the front here, I'm just going to go to the inner roof corners. And this will be a lot easier to do down from the ground. I'll go ahead and rotate them into place. And we'll just put one right there. 
rotate it. Oops, I rotate it too far. There we go. And then put another one right here. And that is the outline of our roof. And the overhang, again, just makes it look really nice. But I love how these tarred wood shingles uh, just fit the theme of the forest here. I was debating of using, like, the stone roof as well. But I think this will look really nice. So now, actually, I might do a little bit of work on the front deck here. And to start out, I'm actually going to go up top to my single one meter or single roof block here. And then select this one to be out of the stone shingle roof block. And then I'm just going to line it right up with the side and go ahead and place a row all the way across from the end to end of each of these pillars here. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the blue highlight is always touching the back of the pillar there. And yeah, see, so I don't want it like that. I want it, yeah, right in there. Perfect. And I want to do this all the way up. And this is just another way to get a cool looking trim piece. Almost looks like a new block that we don't have. <laughs> uh, just by using the roof blocks in this way. And this will just make the door trim look really, really nice. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take uh, the shingles here. Place two like that. And then snap one on the side. One on this side. And then fill in the center here. So just snapping the side, side, and then just one more right up in here. Perfect, so that looks really awesome. And now I'm going to do a little deck railing on the outside. So I'll just go to my single block, we'll have it out of the rough stone. I'll just build it up by two. And right there as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and destroy a little step for myself right here. So I can get up onto the deck. We'll just build it up by two over here. And two over here. And then another cool trick that I was messing around with is if we go to our roof block again, I'm just going to do this out of the stone shingle roof block, we can actually use this as a railing. And you'll see in a second here, look at how nice that looks. It's a lot skinnier than a normal block. And you don't need any of the railing pieces or anything to get this really early game. So you could do this out of like the plant fiber roof block, stuff like that. But yeah, check that out. That looks like a really nice deck railing there. So I'll just do that on both sides here. And then we'll figure out what to do next. So there's our deck railing. Yeah, I love that. I love the look of that. It's nice and simple. I was thinking about having this be an entirely covered porch, but honestly, I really like this little overhang right in front of where the door is going to go. And then just leaving it open like that. I think it just adds some texture. Adds a nice little area to the front. Might put some seating and stuff out here. So now I'm debating what to do to fill in the walls for the roof peaks here. Previously, I've really enjoyed using the shroud wood block for this. But something I wanted to try was the... Uh, if I go to my 2 meter... Actually, we'll just go to 4 meter here and go to this stepped wall. I wanted to try the flintstone block. Uh, the rough flintstone, just to see how that would look, if it would be any different or nicer looking than the shroud would. So if I place like one right there... Ooh, that does look really cool. That's sort of a forest look. I love the green in it and everything. So maybe, let's see, let's do that half in the flint. And then let's do the other half in the shroud wood. So I'll just scroll up there. There we go. And then rotate it. And let's see. Let's see which one looks a little better. Man, they both look really nice, actually. That's tough to decide. For this one, I almost am inclined to go with the flint. I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments. Or maybe I could do the flint for the front section here, and then I could do shroud wood for the sides, even. But I don't know. With how, like, uh... How much stone I've been using on this cabin, with the stone foundation and everything. I almost feel like the flint just kind of matches it nicely. Adds a nice contrast. So yeah, for now, let's go ahead with the flint all the way around. Yeah, that looks quite nice. I'm really loving how the colors in there are matching the forest. So yeah, we'll leave it at the flint for now. And then another thing I wanted to do, just to see how it would look, is to use these mycelium overgrown blocks here and just kind of destroy a few of these pillar blocks and replace them with the mycelium ones. 
I don't know. I don't know how this will look. But I figured maybe it could, uh... Maybe it could be interesting. Just to, again, kind of give it that, like... Rougher, more natural, earthy, foresty feel there. I kind of like how that is. Maybe, like, let's see. This one, this one, this one. I don't want to go too overboard with it. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. I think I will leave it in there. Just adds a bit of like growth and fun texture there to the pillars. So now I think it's time to start working on the chimney here. So I'm just going to go to my 2 meter wall blueprint here. And we're just going to kind of, rather than being all the way on the edge here, because I just think that would be a little too big for the size of this house. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. Something like that. Go ahead and rotate it. And bring it all the way in toward the inside, like that. And we'll bring the walls and things into it later. Uh, I may end up deleting the little platform below it. But it actually looks kind of nice. I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, with that done, I'm just going to go back to my little one or single block pieces. Go ahead and place a couple of them like this. And then that will essentially be continued up a little bit more. I don't know, like maybe two blocks high or something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and fill in the center section because of the fact that there's no smoke mechanics in this game the same way there are in like Valheim for example where you'll get smoked out of your house so with that I'm gonna go ahead and do something like that and I do two all the way around it for a little bit and then maybe the center section will just go the two meter by two meter wall block and sort of start continuing it up a little bit I also brought some scaffolding over just to make it a little easier to get up here on the roof to keep working a little bit. So yeah, we'll just bring that, let's see, up something, I don't know, maybe like that for now. We'll see how it ends up looking. And then I'm just going to continue these little pieces up around the sides. Maybe, maybe just two, honestly. And then this section, maybe it might be nice just to come all the way out with even all the way up to the top there, because I don't know how I how I like it kind of tapering in toward the cabin. I think it should stay straight up at the back side there. Yeah, that feels like a pretty good size. And I do think I'll just go ahead and delete all of these blocks up into the house there. And then down to the floor there. We could just leave that little stone perimeter around the very bottom there. That's okay. Yeah, I think it would look nicer without these. It'll look less beefy and messy at the bottom here. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue, yeah, these outer blocks all the way up. And then kind of shape it to something that I like and get back with you guys shortly here. So there we go. I really like that. Just kept it nice and simple. Did a little flare out on the top by just placing two blocks on either side of the little 2x2 two two pillar that I continued all the way up. So now we can go ahead and just kind of mesh these walls into it from the inside, I think. Again, just using some more of the tarred block there. But yeah, I like that. It's nice and small and simple. I think it'll fit the build well. And here's what it looks like from the inside. So quite a good size for a fire. And one thing we do have to do is bring in some stone to sort of fill this whole area in. So I'll go ahead and bring like a stone up there. Now we can bring these ones down all the rest of the way here. So something maybe, maybe like that. Yeah, that could work. Okay, and then remember these very bottom blocks, we had them out of the rough flint stone. So I'll just be sure to continue those into the chimney. There we go. And then the rest of this can all just be these hardwood blocks here. So that looks pretty nice. And then I made a little tiny fireplace here that we could put in there. But this chimney might honestly look a little better just with the normal campfire uh, in here. Or the fire with the cauldron and stuff as we unlock that later on. But either way, just to give it a little bit of light. 
And then that actually is like a perfect height for a mantelpiece right up there. If we could figure out how to do something nice for a mantle. So I'll have to mess around with some interior decoration here soon. But I think exterior wise, this is actually looking pretty nice so far. I think now the only thing left really is windows and the door here. And I think for the windows, I'm gonna go ahead to my single block here and up, so not at the bottom, but up two blocks. I'm gonna go ahead and chip out a little section, just two by three on both sides here. And those will be my little deck windows. I think that'll be a good spot. And then we can head over to the carpenter and stuff, make some nice windows. Yeah, that's a good spot for them there. And then in the loft, I'd like to have one larger one here. So again, up two. Maybe just a little something there. And I might do that on the sides of the loft too, but how does that look? Yeah, it looks pretty good. The flintstone's a little finicky there. Uh, and how it like creates this like trim piece at the top with the texture there. Uh, but that actually doesn't look too bad. And I think that'll look a lot better, especially when we do actually end up getting a window in there. Okay, so I've done all of the window openings now. We just have two in the loft, one there, one over here, and then the two on the side of the door, and then one larger one back here. And when I step back now, with the texture of the windows, it almost feels like these two pillars on the sides of the deck. This one, as well as this one right over here. It just makes it a little too busy looking, and I'd almost prefer to see the logs kind of come all the way across and then possibly even have some bigger windows than just these ones to be slightly wider here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those pillars and just see if it looks any better. All right, yeah, I removed them and I think that looks a lot better to have the windows be double wide here in the front, don't have the pillars in the way. It just lets you admire sort of the length of the logs a little more as well, even if I did have the windows a little narrower. I think it was just getting a little too busy with that many pillars. And I did the same thing on the back side. I removed the ones on the side here and just moved them instead to be on both sides of this center window, which could also be taken out and replaced for a back door if you wanted that as well. So yeah, with that said, let me go to the other starter house, make up a door and some windows, and then see how that all looks. So here we go, I made some of the new doors and windows that we unlocked with the carpenter. So I'm curious to see how these ones look. We have the polished wood door here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right there. Maybe that'll be too fancy for this cabin. I suppose we'll see in a bit. And then I have the carved wooden window here. I'll go ahead and put two of those in the front here. Just kind of has like a nice little window sill to it. And then two of them in the back. And two of them up here in the loft. One right there. And one right there. How does that all look? Oh, that actually has a lot of nice little character and charm to it. I like that door. And then yeah, we'll fill in over it and everything. But the windows look great. I think this is definitely coming along nice. So yeah, let's go in here and fill in right over the door. I think for that, I'll just use, yeah, I'll just use some more of the tarred blocks here. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll look just fine. There we go. Okay, I also used some of the tarred shingle roof blocks just to create like a mantle illusion over the fireplace. Yeah, I could do a different door for sure. Maybe this one is a little too busy uh, for this. And honestly, yeah, let me try a different door. Let me try the one below it. So here's the door that we unlock before we unlock that fancier one. Let's see what that one looks like. If I open that up. Actually, I like that better for a little cottage in the woods. A little more rustic, a little more crude, but I like that look a lot. Something else I'd like to try too quick on the exterior here is, uh, what would it look like if I did, like, window trim out of this, uh, this stone roof block? So let me go into tab, select it to be the stone shingle roof block, and let's just go ahead and do, like, a little, uh, I don't know how this is gonna look. That looks really cool. It creates this like an archway over the door there. So how would it look if I did that right over these windows? Either way, even just on the top of the windows, that adds a lot to the build. Um, but yeah, what if I did it like down the sides as well? So like there, and there, 
Oh my gosh, this is actually looking really good for some reason. Right in there. Ooh, check that out. Alright, I'm gonna do the other one and we'll step back and take a look at that. See if we want to keep it or not. Oh, that actually looks freaking awesome! It creates a rounded effect around the windows. I am so going to be using that trick for all the hobbit houses I build in here later on. That is really amazing, actually. Yeah, I don't know what you guys think of that, but I just think that adds a whole lot of cool texture to the outside that somehow doesn't look as busy as the columns and things were. So yeah, I'm totally going to use that trick there. I went ahead and used it again here on the interior, just to create like a cool pole that acts as like a support pole for the stairs there. So I just continue with the little shingle roof blocks up there, and then made a little pole, and yeah, that's really nice. I'm actually loving the roof blocks here, because you can control which way they arch and things, like a lot more fine than just a normal block. So yeah, with that said, I kind of want to do a little more interior work, get some furniture in here, and deck this place out. I think it's definitely worthy of some furniture and things. It is such a cute little cottage. Alright, here's the build in a more finished state. I've gone ahead and done some slight touch-ups and added some simple interior decoration. And obviously be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more building and decorating in the future here. But with that said, here I present you my cozy little forest house. So I'll just do a little walkthrough of the outside, so you can see the full build here. I really love the building palette that I used. I just think it fits the environment so nicely, as I've said. But yeah, just a simple little back window there. Heading around in the chimney there. I think it just ties into the build super nice. And now let's head on to the inside here. So, coming in here, we've got the carpenter, which I think looks obviously like a little woodcutter with a saw and things. Uh, so I think having him in this forest cabin fits perfectly. Got a little workbench and things for him, and then some shelving. And then I also realized you could make this mantelpiece at the carpenter, so I think that looks really nice over the fireplace there. I've got a little sink, a little kitchen island, some simple dishes, and some seating here. So, very, very simple right now, but I'd love to deck it out more as I unlock some better stuff. Now heading down into the cellar. I left it pretty unfinished, but went ahead and added the flame altar here, which also adds warmth to the build. So I think it fit there nicely. It's super easy if I wanted to go ahead and finish it a little more. I was thinking maybe this whole wall could be a bunch of storage here. So definitely just some extra space in case it's needed there. And then we head up to the upstairs here, and this is just the little bedroom. I've got a little desk overlooking the window here, maybe a little reading nook or for some late night craft projects or things. And then the cozy little bed over here. So yeah, I think it turned out really, really nice. And then here's what the build looks like at nighttime. It is actually quite cozy. I just love the ambience and the lighting, especially having some of these larger torches just to light some of the bottoms of these big trees. And then being right backed up to the shroud there that glows blue in the night. Really, really peaceful. Yeah, kind of spooky as well. If you just kind of sit here and listen to the foresty sounds at night, it's like, yeah, it makes you want to cozy up inside. Alright, well, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this build. It was definitely a lot of fun. Huge shout out again to all of my channel members. Be sure to join the Discord server through the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.